an extravaganza filled weekend with all kinds of crazy things happening. We're covering the UK for this one. Smash your button, grab that subscribe, and so you guys don't miss out on more awesome content. We're going to be looking at the breakdown for the UK here. I just wanted to pull up the breakdown for the 114 players here. We'll cover Germany and what is it, Belenix, Netherlands, tomorrow, or yeah, tomorrow. So round 114 players, easy stuff here. 25 Tri Brigade variants, one English Warrior variant, six brand kids of notable, 15 Drytron variants. Uh, five of which were Megalith. Six Scrap Raptor variants for dinosaurs. Pretty basic stuff here. Dragon Link had one duelist step up trying to play a Rose Dragon variant, which is actually kind of cool. And I also see here that we had an Orcust Eldritch variant kind of walking around. I've been seeing that a little bit more recently with some things trying to turn around. But those are the only real notable things that draw my attention to the round 114 player breakdown. Now, top 16. We will have more of these deck lists later on in the video here. Uh, no, I don't have the adding Mr. list yet. We will have it tomorrow. So, top 16 breakdown here. So there were eight Zodiac variants. Now, in those Zodiac variants, six of them were Tri-Brigade. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The best deck in the room is still the best deck. Highest representation. Look at this top cut breakdown, man. Half of your bracket is Zodiac Tri-Brigade, almost, all right? We had one Pure and one Eldritch. Uh, we had two Dinosaur in Top Cup, two Drytron, all right? Kind of not surprised about that. Two Dragon Link, oh, okay. And the hard hitter, the Rogue of the Rogue, one Adagnister. I am kind of curious to know um, how hard this build actually went, um, but we'll know soon enough here. But adding Nister locking down its first actual top cut, I am super excited for that, man. Like, that is so cool. All right, and then we had one Altergeist as well. So what is this indicating right now? Well, it looks like Rogue didn't quite punch as hard in this tournament, which isn't a bad thing whatsoever. It's only 114 players, but when you see cool things, like adding Nister, getting the chance to do well. Oh, I'm so excited. All right, we're gonna pass it on over for some deck. Now, I think the most interesting list to top cut here was actually Herman Hansen's list. Herman actually executed something relatively interesting. We pulled out Dimensional Fissure and Macro Cosmo here. We, we've seen countless times that Herman has been the master of playing this, but it also kind of reminds me here of a little bit shift in the format in terms of monster negates here. So you see here, we have Forbidden Chalices and Infinite Permanences here. Kind of, are we are we stringing the format towards more of a negation-based window? I'm kind of curious about that, actually. So Herman... Locking it down here with a very interesting take on Zoo for this. And I think that this is probably the most interesting thing that I kind of saw out of this weekend's event was Herman's been playing this build for so long, man. Like every time I look at a top cut for an event, Herman is always here playing pure Zoo. All right? And to see that once again, you, you have this push here for these disruptions. And before you're like, well, wait a minute, Robbie. You're praising this too much. Macro Cosmo and Dimensional Fissure all clash with Zeus. The important thing here is the DeFi and the Macro Cosmo set up for the turn one disruption. Beyond that, once you've already established and you've got a Zeus doing the job for you, backing it up with like other stuff, then you have this 3K machine monster that's just gonna be a powerhouse and wreck your opponent. That's what you really care about here. So, huh, I, uh, I am very impressed with what Herman came up with here for this event. All right, next up, second place, Owen Wilson reached out to me and said, hey, Robbie, I got second place to the extravaganza. You wanna talk about my list? I was like, absolutely, man. So what do we got going on here? So I see here that we are still packing in triple Lancia for disruptions. I see that we have now adapted full copies of Diviner. I don't think, unless you're like trying to do some budget shenanigans, I don't think you're not gonna play three Diviner. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like this is just gonna be your stable. And then of course, we're bulking down on two Ava here. All right. And of course, triple copies of Harold. Uh, and then here we are. We are playing the one tech copy of Instant Fusion. Ah, 
we're playing the Vermilion Sparrow out here. Hmm, that's kind of hilarious, actually. All right, interesting stuff. Huh. All right, well, honestly, outside of everything, probably uh, could have tested the Millennium Eyes, but I see what we're attempting to do here. Kind of interesting stuff. There's nothing too crazy, honestly, that really cooks up when you look at these sort of decks. Um, you just have to understand that once the ritual negate machine starts going here, it starts doing its thing. Also, now that Diviner's here, a lot more players were like, well, sometimes I have to choose between like going down like E to 10 or something. I think that this is gonna be your best competition. I know a few people are trying Matanus, or the, the big uh, ritual-based guy, but I don't think that he's really that good for this deck. Also, I'm liking the uh, the little Shadal package that we got going on here. We're able to make Ariel and Dragon and then poop out the Op Cologne here. We already have access to Construct down here in the extra deck, but that's a cute little package that you'll be able to side in and just, hey, cool thing is uh, these are all light monsters. So if you're gonna bring in, you know, the mini engine here, you're gonna get full advantage of it. So that's actually awesome too. Ah, next up. This was Keon Bakley's fifth place list, actually. Now, the, the straight tech choice here is the Tribrigado. So you can target a link monster you control. So have some one beast, wing beast, or wing beast monster with a different type from your hand or graveyard. If you control, okay, so that's it. If you control at least one of each, a beast, beast warrior, or wing beast monster, banish this card from a giver, target one face of solar trap card your opponent controls and negate its effects until the end of the turn. So what's so great about this? this stops evenly matched okay so if you have this loaded up into the graveyard and then your opponent's like hey i'm gonna evenly you you just laugh at them and then slam this you know from the graveyard banish it negates these anything that your opponent has negates these you don't have to worry about it all right like it's actually really good i'm also liking the tech breakthrough skill down here once again imperms chalices from that first place list and then i see breakthrough skill down here I wonder if we're going to have a very hard shift here in the upcoming weeks in the metagame as we see players push back against this and we possibly see that shift back to Imperm, Effect Veilers, Chalices, Breakthrough Skills, because that's what I'm already starting to see here in terms of like these options, the people that were on this. They were good. I also see down here we're playing two bear boom. Uh, I do kind of think we might be heading down the the two cob is the bear broom um, for most builds. I think I saw some builds that were trying one, but I don't know. I'm seeing a lot more two ofs than three ofs in a lot of these variants. Also, you're definitely maximizing revolt now. Like I know there were some older players who were like, nah man, two revolt. No, 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 no. That was so garbage. All right, take full advantage of that. So that's everything that I have on the front end here from the UK event. As a side note here, I got sent this. This was the 23rd place out of the German extravaganza. All right, they had 150 some players. I will go way more in depth than that tomorrow when more information is out on that. But what you are looking at right now is some stri Sky Striker. It's been a really long time here. So we're on two rows, triple ray, as it should be. One Mystic Mind to slow grind the opponent. I know how many people hate this, but it's kind of needed. We have talents to maximize our losses. All right, AKA, well, we start getting grinded out. I also see down here in the side, we got the grind package. All right, we got the judgments and the strikes. Only one Zeke, that's absolutely fine. Kinda's at one. Uh, triple Hyate has become more of a norm at this point. Of course, we got the Selene and the Hulk package, and we got a nice little Soldier of Chaos here. Hmm, I guess we can Widow Anchor steal cards from our opponent. Uh, also, before somebody's like, well, why would you play Triple Phantasme in Sky Strike? It's not like you can't just link it out into a Zeke and then start climbing around. So, like, if you stick this on the turn, or, so you guys go second, you stick a Phantasme on the field, it's not a problem, man. You'll be able to filter through your hand options, sculpt your hand, and you can just normal summon, you know, Rose or Ray, you know, go into Zeke here, and then you can just tag down into any of your Sky Strike armaments. So it's not that hard to get this thing off of the field. 
All right. So instead of that, not too bad as a deck to grind your opponent out. I'm actually really happy to see that Alex did very well with this. So that is everything that I have from these extravagances. There'll be far more information to come, but this is just enough to kind of wet the whistle for what's to come. So guys, what do you think? Please leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. Smash your little crap out subscribe button so you guys don't miss out more awesome content. And I'll see your beautiful faces back here later on in the day with some more cool awesome content. Peace out, guys. Thank you, patrons, for making the ride never truly end without you guys' support. Well, I would probably be doing troubleshooting videos for a living. Guys, please check out Vanquil 40 for all of your Cardfight Vanguard content brought to you by Mco40. And if you are looking to pick up singles, check out mcogames.com for your trading card game needs. Thanks for watching, everybody.